Welcome to We Are Everyone, a video and podcast series powered by Pivotal Moments, and we focus on the intersection of mental wellness in the workforce. We bring together young professionals and mindful executive mentors to bridge the generational gap and bring to the surface conversations about the importance of mental wellness and how to overcome career tradition challenges. Mental wellness is paramount. Join us. Welcome to We Are Everyone. I'm your host, Jen Sherman, and we have two very special guests today, as all our guests are very special, but these two in particular are actually behind the scenes of We Are Everyone, so we thought it would be great to showcase the hardworking folks behind the scenes and talk about mental wellness, our favorite topic. So welcome, Pamela and Matt. We have Matt Bellman. He is the amazing engineer at HeartCast Media and also a host of a podcast, Chirpin DMV. And we have Pamela Lynn Sorensen. She is the Sorensen. She no, is the Sen. I know. I was. I did that on purpose. <laughs> she is the president of High Frequency Consulting and also the director of business development at Pivotal Moments. Is that the proper title? Sure. Sure. Today. Awesome. Yes. Well. <laughs> awesome. Well, welcome to you both. We're gonna have a very fruitful conversation. And as you know, we like to start each episode out with a statistic. I'm switching it up today. I chose a new one, and it's approximately 30% of entrepreneurs report having depression. This is twice as many as the general population. In the pandemic, it is reasonable to assume the numbers are now much higher. They don't have a lot of new statistics yet, so that's why I have to say reasonable. Um, How has the pandemic affected your mental fitness and daily practice? And as entrepreneurs and independent contractors, we're used to managing our own time and to-do list. And how has the pandemic shifted your mindset? Pamela's Who wants punch? to go first? You go first? That's sure, all you. Sure, sure. I mean, basically, we can spend five hours on this topic, but I will shorten it so that Matt has a chance to speak as well. Um, you know, I, I it is interesting from the standpoint, like you know, you as an entrepreneur or solopreneur, which is what I am, um, you do sometimes, even pre-pandemic, you feel like you're kind of like on an island a a little bit, but that's okay. Um, And I always had really strong connections with my clients. That's how I gained a lot of strength and creating really strong relationships and being very involved with them and being very engaged with them and having um, interactions with them um, pretty much numerous times a week, sometimes every day, depending on if what if what project we might be working on. And from the standpoint of, okay, it's this pandemic, now I'm working from home, I'm not going to interact with other people or my clients face to face, from whether it's happy hours or lunches or coffees or networking events or meetings at all. Um, I really kind of shifted my own ability to stay afloat. I mean, it was like for a while there by doing exactly what I had been doing before and consistently staying very, very engaged with my clients and being really engaged with my partners and being really engaged with um, anybody that I, I could from the from the outreach and, and so forth. And I think just to kind of just being there for each other has helped me a lot. And I mean, that's phone calls, that's Zooms, that's um, FaceTimes, that's Teams meetings, that's uh, text messages, that's anything. So I think, you know, that's kind of helped me from being a solopreneur. Um, I guess in terms of time management, I, I, I feel like when you don't have a commute, you can't really set a time management up. So not, like now I'll sit here. I'll just work from whenever I wake up to when I go to sleep. Whereas when I had that commute, even though it was just walking to the metro and going four stops in and walking up into a building, it's just like I can decompress each and every day before and after work and like, okay, I'm going to work to work. And then I'm coming home and not worrying about work unless it's like something urgent or an emergency. Whereas now my time management is just not like, what can I do before or after work? It's what can I do between work throughout the entire day, which is I find uh, I'm not going to say it's a harder part, but it's just a completely different part. Because like I said, if it's like 10 o'clock at night and I'm bored, I'll just come in here and sit down and work because I'm used to it. Yeah. yeah, I would say, frankly, there's like not a lot of separation. And even though I didn't have necessarily an office, I mean, even when at least when HeartCast was in Mindspace or like we had the studio, I would at least be able to like go places and now or the Tower mm-hmm. Club. And now I'm. 
I actually went into work uh, to this was interesting. I went into WeWork today for a second to meet with a uh, a partner friend of mine, I guess, Natalie Oliverio. She needs to be on this podcast, by the way. And I was, it was so weird. I was like, there's people working. Like, this is like the normalcy of things. It was like, I haven't, it was just, it was weird. Cause I just, we've been working in our solo offices for so long. Yeah. And I mean, like Jen, it's, it's interesting. You're just going back to pivotal moments. Um, we were really gearing up for a year, year and a half um, for a film project, a documentary project and Iron Lions, which is now um, saving the roar. And I was on the road a lot. I mean, up and back and all over the place, putting on, helping to put on events, putting on fundraisers, going to meet, going up to Penn State and State College, going up to Harrisburg, going to Pittsburgh, going to all over the place. And it was, there was, you know, that kind of thrill of I'm a big part of something and I'm getting this energy from other people and I'm meeting other people. And it was, when that went away, poof, it was at first, it was like, oh, my gosh, I miss that so much. And then I thought, wow, I kind of have my time back in a way. And I'm not on, driving on the road. And I get to be with my dog. And but it, it I did kind of I did miss that, that f- it fueled me. And that was something that I, I certainly knew from the at the very beginning, like, oh, that's that's not there anymore. I got to find something else to fuel me. Yeah. And our office was pretty empty anyway. It was pretty much just me and the entire studio. So it's not that much different from being by myself here. But at, <laughs> but at least it's like, well, to be fair, my processes are a lot easier now doing it virtually than compared to in studio, just in terms of the amount of time it takes me to do stuff. Because now I'm just pulling everything from my computer instead of pulling it from a mixer into a, a different software and then finally to my computer. But at least like like Jen said, people would come in and I knew I had meetings throughout the day where people would come in and be like, all right, so-and-so is coming in for a show. And depending on the day, depending on how big up my break is, at least I can like walk down the street to District Taco and have like three Modellos knowing I don't have that much of a crazy afternoon left. And that's get some fresh air for two hours and then come back. But mm, District now, Taco. now we just walk the, to the kitchen. Right? I do miss the studio. I do really miss the studio. You weren't you weren't working for Molly when I used to have all the kids, my, my kids come in, um, the interns. I had like three interns for one summer. It made no sense. I had no idea what to do with them. It was probably a bad idea, but um, they would. We would just work from the studio. kind of like putting a studio next to construction in DC. Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> precisely. Yeah. That's that's exactly yeah. what it was like. So, but I think you know, to your point of just being able to like break up the day, it was just um, it's very different. Like it's definitely different, and that's when I was like saying, we're work we're going into work. We worked today. I was like, this is weird. Um, so thinking about that, going into kind of the next topic of workplace culture. I mean. Outside of even the pandemic, you know, as solopreneurs, like working for yourself, I mean, it's kind of first, it can get really lonely. And then number two, you know, we're able to create our own culture um, and also our discipline routine. I mean, we have to wake up every, every single day and work, right? And like some days you just don't want to do it or some days you're not feeling well. I would say, you know, <laughs> let's not do that and, you know, go and um, just play hooky for a day. So I was wondering, you know, what's your workplace culture? I know, you know, we have the mascot baby Frazier back there. Um, And also, you know, how do you create your own discipline? Matt, you can go first. Oh, See, I was gonna. I was hoping you would go first. On okay, I'll go questions. first. You would hit the triple and then I just got to come back behind. And I will go first. I'll go first. I'm happy unless you want to. No, you got this one. I'll do the next one. I'll do the next one. Okay. All right. Okay. So I I have fluctuated with my workplace culture, especially as the year since it's been a year, basically, or almost a year. And and I say first first is there there's the attire, there's the discipline, there is the organization and um the agenda, if you will, for the day. And uh attire is it is fluctuated from like pajamas to and not showering which did not work well and doesn't work well for anybody, even if it's not a pandemic and you're working from home. And then I was like, I'm going to go to the exact opposite end. And I was so dressed up and I was like putting on makeup and I was putting pictures of myself on Instagram and Facebook. I was like, look at me, look at me. And everybody's like, yeah, yeah, that's so great. And that lasted like a week. And (laughs) then I was like, okay, there's got to be a happy medium. And that's when I discovered loungewear, like fancy, expensive and not expensive loungewear. And it just was like, oh, 
sneakers and loungewear and shorts Some and joggers, hoodies. Some joggers, sweatpants. And- the ti- oh, oh, yeah. You never got the tie-dye yes. loungewear. I'm surprised you don't have the tie-dye. No, I do all the block, the uh, color block. I'm all in color block. I mean, it was like, I, I mean, I... I'm just going to have to wear them for the rest. And then I got into like the, as it got colder, I got into like the beanies and then I like the like cool sneakers and the Uggs and everything. And I said, okay, so my attire is like soup, uh, kind of crazy, cool, casual for kids, if you will. I would, even say, like, I would say like a high schooler, honestly, you really get into that like sk- skater girl look lately. And, and so that's, that's my attire. I mean, as far as, um, getting myself organized and everything I have, uh, part of my problem is, is that yes, I have the, uh, the app, the Peloton app, and I have my behind me. I have the basket that has like the yoga mat and the blanket and the blocks and everything. And I know every day, twenty minutes, ten minutes, a half an hour. I'm like, I just kick off my shoes and just do, you know, because I'm already in my la- yoga pants. I can just do this, but I, or I could go. I'm going to go take a walk by myself for thirty minutes. My butt sits in this chair. Mm-hmm. And it goes to the kitchen. It goes in the bathroom. It goes. I'm, I'll do laundry, but I I have not. And I you know I have Babbel that I'm trying to like do, you know relearn Spanish. So I I know that this this problem of saying step away, make the time to do the other things. It's not just about work has been my problem. So kind of like setting the intention and, and agenda for the day is something that I really need to work on. I. That, that kind of goes with what I said earlier. I mean, um, in terms of sitting in front of the computer all day and then me working from like when I wake up to go to sleep. Because now instead of when you're in the actual office, you're like, all right, I have to sit down and do my work from legit 8 to 5 p.m. And then, not, and then I'm done. So from now, the reason I find myself a lot of times working from like 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. Because I might have a meeting at 10 a.m. And then not another one till 2.30 so I might go from 11.30 to 2 and just go off and do something. You know what I mean? Take the dogs to the dog park. Um, <clears throat> just And just kind of break my day up. So I'm working in like two or three hour chunks at a time with like an hour, hour and a half off and then doing that. But just ties into why my day takes so long. It feels like I'm. that's why I'm sitting here at like 11.30 each night. Like, what the hell am I doing? Um, but yeah, I mean, workplace culture, it went from at the beginning, it went from like sitting at the kitchen table just with the laptop and like, all right, I just got to get through a couple weeks and then we're good. And then it's like, all right, let's move to the basement here and kind of get away from all the people in the house. It's like, all right, this isn't working either. So now like I just recently moved last month. So it's like, I have to find a house with an extra office in it. Yeah. I have to like legit make my own office now. So. Yep. Yep. And I, I mean, I, to your point about like moving your workspace around, I moved (laughs) all I mean, I'm, I was like in the dining room table that I was on that kitchen island. Yep. And then I was like, uh, and then I, but that, that, that dining room table, which is now finally a dining room table, um, what I moved it and I changed, I, I worked on all side, all four sides of the table and I finally. All it takes is one person to mention something in your background that you'd be like, dang, and just like move <laughs> to the other side. Well, well, we know What's I had a, like, we know we it. had, I had to figure my thing out because every I had to move my desk because everyone would see my foot tapping in all my videos. So <laughs> I took me, it's taken me a really long time to get this desk in the right position. But like, what else are we supposed to do, but just rearrange everything all the time? Like Pamela, I mean, I, that I, it always gets me when your client said to you, I mean, really, you've made a lot, you've really utilized that, like. 850 square feet. Well, this area is where I go. <laughs> and this one tile, this is where actually I do med- meditation. This two foot by two foot area right here is where I do this. And then this is where I eat. This is where I do this. This is where I do. Yeah, you got to with these, with these spaces to keep your sanity. So speaking of collaboration, right? I mean, frankly, my eyes really hurt from just being always looking at the screen. Um and I think, you know, at least while you, know, you were saying that, like, at least you, you had your clients come in person to record, at least you had like, p- like interaction in that regard. And also, you know, it's hard to in general now where at least we had in-person meetings to kind of like hash things out if you needed to. Right. And like, I think body language is really big and like all of that stuff. So, you know, how have you been able to like pivot in return um, in terms of like collaboration with clients, team members then also operating your business and then also how does these how is how has these adjustments affected your mental wellness matt you're starting 
I mean, it, in terms of communicating, it's nothing different in, uh, from my end, at least. But granted, like I said earlier, we're a super small company in terms of there's there's only me and Molly in D.C. So if you ever needed to meet up, she'd just pop in the office and do that. And now it's just like, all right, if we need to figure something out, we just slack it since our since some of our video guys and website guys are out in the Philippines and Abu Dhabi and wherever the heck else. So they're just kind of we just kind of cross paths like ships in the night when they're up and I'm up and <clears throat> that two hour window we have, I guess. But so nothing really there. I mean, everybody seems to download Slack. I mean, I know for our personal stuff, we I, I implemented Slack on that because for chirping, we got 10 people now on the team and they're always doing different stuff. So we have that with the various channels. It's pretty easy to communicate with people because you got to realize, I guess, depending on the age range too. I mean, like for our age, we're always on our phones and computers. So like if I Slack you or text you about something and you don't respond, you're probably just purposely not responding to me, which I do to other people all the time. It's like, oh, I'm so busy. I'm doing this right now, <laughs> which I have been, but um so it's kind of crazy but yeah like i said on, and then on the mental wellness side just trying to communicate with people and everything it and collaborating with people it's almost easier because i feel like a lot of people are stuck in that trance of always now like i said again earlier just always being online and kind of just near even though they may not be working they may just have it in the background or something like that and more people are people heard the the term transformed to virtual and they took it seriously and they turned to every single thing virtual it's true so it's like, all right. so I mean, collaboration wise, yeah, it's, it's pretty, I feel like it's almost gotten easier now, whereas it used to be like, hey, let's set up this phone call and then or maybe try to meet, which I, I would prefer to do. But in terms of the, the easier and being like, hey, let's just jump on a pop on a quick zoom or something like that. And we can hash this out way quicker, but it's not the ideal method. And if, if you like to be social and hang out with people, but yeah, I, I think that I agree 100% with what you said about it's quicker and you can set something up mm -hmm. really fast and you could do three collaboration. I, mean, I could do yeah. with, for my clients, I could do, I, I, in fact, I could look at my email chain of something and I see these emails back and forth. I was like, listen, let's just hop on a Zoom. Let's just hop on a call or I just picked mm -hmm. up, pick up the phone because I'm of that generation where you just pick up the phone and, or actually I don't, I dial my iPhone. I don't like physically pick up a phone and dial, but uh, like, because if I did, that'd be really, like, yeah, that'd be really hard if, to pick up the phone and, and dial on an iPhone. But it's just making a phone call or it's it's like there's no let's not wait. There's a lot of this. Let's just get it done now. Let's just get it done now. Let's just, because wh what do we have to wait for? Trying to get I so with my clients and my clients clients, I call it herding feral cats who were running that. around with knives <laughs> scissors and are also on fire and i need to you know basically take care of them and it's it's a lot of how do we set these how do we take calendars and set schedules and everybody's like oh you have eyes into my calendar and then i'm looking at these calendars and i'm like oh my gosh well, i've got to collect well, i've got to do this i've got to set up this meeting with eight people who have calendars that look like puke has been you know thrown all over them there's no way but it's you know we figure it out and i think it's easier to do it that way than if we were to go well we have to have this meeting where everybody physically has to be at this place at the same time yeah. because that is not going to happen so i think yeah just getting it done faster um uh yes it's not as personal and uh but and i also like the whole sharing screen thing you know, yeah. which just like, mm -hmm. let's, let, let's just not talk about it. Let's mm -hmm. share a screen. Let's go over certain things. Yeah. Let's make comments. Let's, and, um, do the follow up that we need to. So that's a lot easier. I do miss whiteboarding though. Whoa, I, I just whiteboard in the back. I did it on the phone. I did it on a call today. I think like, I'm so sorry for turning my back to you, but I was like, I can't. And I just whiteboard. You should get one, Pamela. <sighs> that this four by four space over here is where <laughs> I whiteboard. <laughs> It's true. I have seven markers. They smell <laughs> good. <laughs> Different flavors. Oh, I used to love oh, those. I, they would be smelly markers. Those are, no, that was kind of <laughs> dangerous when I was little. I used to like, I really like the grape and the cherry. Maybe that's why I'm like, my brain's a little off. Um, so to that point also, I think, you know, thinking about where, you know, the efficiency of meetings, I think I would just, I think it, everyone always just wanted to go out, right? So it was like, we have to have a coffee meeting. And then you felt bad if it wasn't a coffee meeting. It's like, I don't want to schlep to a coffee meeting right now. I mean, I think we're just being a lot, like a lot more efficient. And 
and the sharing of the screens. I mean, we, I think they're more working meetings and just talking. Like we're actually getting stuff done rather than just talking about it in like a small conference room. Um, but you, you know, I think it's really interesting and weird is that we, there were a lot of people over the past year that I have not physically met in person that perhaps I'm doing business with or yep. perhaps I'm collaborating with or perhaps all of these things, never met them in person. And every, we, we talk with them and we were in, engaged with them and we have to trust each other and we have to do all these things together and we're doing it on Zoom, we're doing it on email. And I'm like, wow, we're doing a lot of stuff together and we've never physically met in person. And it's just... We would never have done that before in the olden days. We were like, we have to look, we have to, if we're going to collaborate, if we're going to partner, if we're going to get anything done together, we have to look each other in the eyes. We have to shake hands. Mm -hmm. We have to break bread. We have to drink wine and we have to, or we have to sit in a boardroom. Oh, Oh, I remember (laughs) those days when I was back at, you know, uh, well, I I remember those days I used to do that like literally like all, all the time last year. Right. I mean, like literally all the time but now it's funny i actually look at most of like some of my clients i haven't met i like i haven't met a lot of them they're new clients <laughs> or like a lot of our clients like i met once and then as soon as they started their podcast they came in studio for their first episode and then after that we never saw each other again so every time i'm saying I'm like remember that one time well yeah Matt, <laughs> Gosh, I, please. I think i only came in like twice when you started and then we went into lockdown yeah which is crazy because I think Molly was like, oh, yeah, you know, this was February of last year, Matt started. I was like, oh, that's like literally right before the lockdown. Um, I Actually, I'll tell you one thing. I actually really like the virtual podcast better because they look – I think they look better than the studio. Just in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. You can doll them up a lot more. Yeah. A lot, lot more. Um, okay. This is, this is the fun one. This is actually my favorite topic. Um, and I know Pamela can – and Matt can probably speak to this too – uh, is we're uh, we have four different generations in the workforce, and it's been found that younger ge- generations have had more difficulty acclimating to the virtual world. Now that doesn't necessarily pertain. Like, what's interesting ar- about all of us is we're all different ages, but since we are used to working for ourselves, it's we're kind of had that advantage going into the pandemic because we're used to like just kind of self instruction. Um, but, you know, what trends are you seeing across different generations and how they communicate about mental wellness? And then another thing is like, to your point of adapting to, you know, these new technologies. I mean, I know that my dad, when he, and he probably, he doesn't like when people say this or tell the story, but I think it's hilarious. So I'm going to say it anyways, is, you know, he was teaching a class on Zoom and he was, I mean, he was freaking out about using Zoom, right? And like, you know, having to teach classes, like all these meetings. And, you know, he one time it was um, like he was muted and like someone had a show like you were muted or whatever, blah, blah, blah. It was terrible. But we've had to, we've all had to, every generation adapt to technology like we ha- had did not have to do before. So, and again, that plays into mental wellness because that's stressful and all this stuff. So I was just curious, especially, I would like to hear your opinion on this too, Matt, as you, um, or an engineer of podcasts and have people from probably all different ages as guests. Like, how has that been? Well, half of them still don't know how to use Zoom and we're a year into this. <laughs> That's the biggest issue. I mean, I feel like your older, oldest generation has the ability to sit back and be like, all right, I worked my whole life and never had to go through anything like this. So let me kind of sit back and think of what it would have been like if I were to. So therefore, that would make that makes them. I've, I've noticed a lot more open up about talking about things. Whereas the youngest, not quite us, but younger than us, they're kind of like, well, if I say anything, the only place I can say it is Twitter, or something like that. So they feel like the only outlet is Twitter or anything like that, which you see a lot of on here. And then you, you tweet something, you never know what the hell somebody's going to say. Um, and then you kind of have like the crowd, like in the middle right there, where it's just kind of like, all right, we've 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 we're into the workforce here for maybe five, anywhere from five to. 10 to 15 years and we're going to get through this and we're going to have another 15 or so years left in the workforce. So this is just kind of bumping the road down the middle. So I'll kind of see how it goes and kind of reassess from there and throughout this and then kind of recalibrate and go on once we can get back to normal and kind of figure out what I liked, what I didn't like about it and kind of mend, mend them both together for this post um, pandemic when we're back mm-hmm. to what we can do. Well, yeah, what we could do. I don't know. If, I don't know what normal is at this point. 
<laughs> now nah, I was going to say normal, but I was like, that's not a good word. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm really not exposed to a lot of the young folk at all. So I can't really speak to what the young people, the, those young little whippersnappers are doing. Um, I really am not exposed to a lot of that. So, but I will tell you that, um, <laughs> The young, young people who are in, who are the young people of my colleagues and friends and um, uh, clients and so forth who have to deal with kids in college or high school, like that has been kind of crazy too, because they're trying to look at, like, they're, they have, they might be on a, a path of like, I want to get into this college because I want to have this type of career. And this is for them turned their whole lives topsy turvy. So I think that's going to be really interesting for this young, 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 young group of uh, a demographic of people who will whose lives have been disrupted in a way because that will be part of our workforce. Um, but I mean, I think that from a tech, especially from a technology perspective, I mean, my parents figured out how to do Zoom and my dad finally figured out how to do his FaceTime. And I was like, whoa, this is like my mom calls the computer the machine that she plays solitaire on. Um, the fact that they figured out how out of necessity how to use Zoom has been I was like, that is exciting. That's great. Um, but I think the rest of the people like the in between groups, um, it is it is a you got to do it. Or else you're gonna you're gonna go kaput. You have to figure it out. Yeah, and I think you know we're seeing that with businesses too. Whether you know you embrace the change or you don't, like you kind of have to sink or swim. And I mean, I'm I learned things that I don't know tech like technical wise. You know, I mean, I discovered TikTok in the summer. That was fun. Um, it's a whirlpool you don't necessarily want to go down. Um, <laughs> But I will say actually something about TikTok. Uh, there, the younger generation on there, I think Gen Zers are a lot more open about mental wellness and or you know mental wellness and like things going on like than any any other generation. I think millennials personally, like we've we're very vocal, but at the same time we were also told to not be vocal by by older generations. So I think. It's going to be really interesting to see the Gen Zers come out and about because particularly in the workforce, to your point, and like, I mean, what they're experiencing now, it's like they can't, their brains aren't uh, mature enough to even like process this whole madness. So it's interesting. Yeah. Well, we were also the Vine generation too, which was much better. Oh, we were Vine. What? Why did Vine no. go away? Was it just did not hit, did not know. hit it correctly? Like... So that hit it way better than TikTok. I tell but you. But then that. why did timing is everything. Timing, timing is exactly. everything. Yep. You look at like MySpace and all those other Com. it's all about timing. Clubhouse. I've been trying to convince Matt, Matt to get on Clubhouse. I mean, Pamela and I have such great times. That was a smart one. And that's actually great for mental wellness because you can like connect and have all these like a very good time and not even have to be on camera. I don't spend much time on social media. Though. That's my problem. Even though like I'm on it 24 seven, but that's mostly just like, all right, I have to get this content out for a brands, B my own personal brand stuff, but I'm not like just scrolling it to like, I don't know. I guess I don't use social media really to talk to people or just sit on it for you and just do all Good that type of thing. You. Besides getting my content out. I'm just not like, just like, Oh, let me scroll through and let's see who I can talk to today on Twitter. I would agree with that. I just think clubhouse is a newfound like obsession. For like, you know, it's like kind of the, it's the flavor of the week. But I do think it's going to blow up. And I think it's a place that um, it's like the non-social media because you're having like real authentic conversations. But we can have to save that mm -hmm. argument for another time. Um, so question, which we ask all our guests, as you know, is what does mental wellness mean to you? Uh, sure, I'll go. Um you know, I, I have been thinking about this because I know a lot of people will say, well, it means, you know, being from like yoga and walking and eating right and sleeping, which it does. It absolutely does. But I think for me, very, very personally, after the, the journey that I've had over the past couple of years, I'd say from like 2017, 2018 and on, and of course with COVID included, is really just taking a hard look at myself and being honest with myself about everything, being truthful with myself about my life, my 
what 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 brings me joy, what hardships I have to face, what people I need to be around, what people I need to cut out, what things do I need to do um, in my life to be to feel strong. And I always go back to um, the five and the five for me, faith, family, friends, and Frazier. You know, that girl behind there. And when my mental wellness is. Did I say five? Faith, family, friends, and Frasier. Yeah, I just said the, my. So what's the five? Oh, I meant to say my F, the Fs, not but the five. <laughs> okay. Well, yes, yeah, we'll find it. Just, okay. Actually, the, the last one is finances. So, I mean, when that's in order, because trust me, if that's not in order, that is a huge mental health issue <clears> for me personally. Major, major, major. So, yes, you're right. There's, there, there are five. <laughs> um, and, uh, but just really taking a, a, the you know drinking the truth truth serum and staring myself in the mirror and saying what do I have to do to make sure that I am being truthful with myself and I like oh everything's super great and blah 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 which I think when I was so busy running around doing all the things is uh, with my business and with my friends and whatever you I didn't have to face myself in the mirror because it was easy to bypass because I was so busy um, but I think especially over the past year. It was like the truth serum had to come out and I had to look at myself in, in many mirrors and just say, if I, I cannot be at as good steady place mentally without being honest with myself. Yeah. I mean, I think keeping your mind fresh, refreshed, engaged. I mean, it's like we said earlier, it's so easy to get into a trance when you're working from home, doing the same thing every single day. Uh, and just keeping your mind, giving yourself something to look forward to, even if it's once a week. Like Thursday nights, I go skate. That's that's what it is, and it's great. So it's like, all right, on my Thursday nights, I get to go to the rink and play some hockey for a couple hours. But And then also kind of noticing the signs of when um, things might start getting bad, it, 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 which kind of ties into keeping your mind fresh because if you're like kind of noticing you're starting to get down, this, that, and the other, you're like, all right, maybe I should change up even the slightest bit of my daily routine and kind of refresh the mind here and get myself thinking about other stuff and kind of in a different system in terms of how I approach each day and just kind of like, I maybe need to mix it up a bit throughout this week or maybe cut down on uh, the hours this week just because I, I maybe if you're able to pinpoint what it is, that's kind of bringing it down mentally and just kind of taking it that way. Yeah, that, that is a really good, that's good, great advice. Yeah, no, I really like that. Advice. I like the approach because I think it's like, I think the whole thing is why we call it mental fitness and mental, mental fitness, frankly, is how to get ahead of what, if there might be like that down moment, but just being able to try to get ahead of it and, and like listening to your body is really <clears> important. Um, and also I like truth serum, Pamela. That's a, I haven't heard that one yet. It just came to me. I don't know. I like it. I like it because it's true. She was overtaken by the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it must be your energies That's together. That's the vibe of We Are Everyone. That's the vibe. Well, we didn't really talk too much. I, I mean, I don't. I might have skipped a little over mental fitness, but we can tie it back to the last question. Um, you know, mental fitness, uh, we started talking about probably in the third season of We Are Everyone where it's – it, mental – wellness and mental like just your mental state in mind it's it's a marathon and not a sprint so mental fitness is like how can you constantly and to your point matt of like constantly be kind of taking care of your mind and being being aware of it so mindful awareness and and how can you you know flex your uh Mm -hmm. mental fitness muscle uh consistently so we like to play a game called what's that resource and you know how do you practice preparing with, uh, preparing with uh, basically if you're ha- feeling like adversely, if you're adversity mentally, that's my brain's obviously twisted. <laughs> we understand what you're saying. Get it. And then also, how do you flex your mental fitness muscle? Ah, uh, preparing. I mean. Kind of just, like you said, having that um, kind of thing you can go to. This is where the, the whole keeping the, the, the mind fresh. So say there's, say, if if I know, say I have one client that's just kind of, I know it's going to be an annoying session every single time or something. I'm going to have to deal with something uh, that's just kind of kind of going to 
grind my gears a bit and then throughout the entire process of the next week working with them editing and this that and the other is going to be kind of a thing i kind of yeah like you said preparing for situations where you think it's going to be bad and then knowing kind of going back to your the stuff you've set up for yourself mentally it could be physically too and just going out and doing something i mean a lot of the times like all right i know i got to prepare for uh, this certain client i'm gonna i'm gonna listen to some music for 20 minutes and not work before i get into this meeting with them and just kind of relax everything and then come in and not be on edge because i i'm not like i said kind of come in not being on edge and mm -hmm. potentially having something go wrong or this that and the other mm -hmm. i mean for me i i feel like what i've learned is it's the little things that help me every day it's mm -hmm. something little something small i mean it's i, I can't think about the the long like oh where am i going to be a year from now am i going to be on a trip somewhere yeah that's nice to think about but it's every day we have we're facing something like little hiccups here and there and um <laughs> what has kept me um flexing if you will it's and bringing joy to me uh i will even say little things like fresh flowers being delivered to my home from whole foods which you can see oops a little bit over here. Uh, tulips. Tulips are my favorite. Um, hydrangea are my favorite. So I have each week I have uh, Whole Foods deliver flowers to me and it just makes me, it makes me really happy. And also like, because I mean, I'm just, I know we were kind of laughing about my, my home being like, oh, now we have this area over here and this area. But it really actually, it makes me like I created a haven and a, a heavenly home for me because this is where I spent a lot of my time and especially during the cold, cold time. So knowing that I have pillows that are just nice to look at or sit on or little or, or an area that I can look at or looking out the window as I'm on all my calls. Those are little things that are like, okay, that brings me peace. That brings me joy during some sort of stressful situation. And then the last thing that I, I, <laughs> Jen knows this, um, and it goes back to one of my five, Frasier. So I have, a, I get a very entertained and I like to laugh. I laugh all, anytime I can laugh like that, I have to infuse myself with humor. Everything to me, if I can laugh all of the time, I would. And that would also put me in probably a place that w where there are rubber walls. But I absolutely <laughs> just would do anything to – like, she's my entertainer. I entertain myself by doing fun things. I could dress her up. I put – you know, I take pictures of her on – put them on Instagram. I do – like, I just send pictures of my of her to my friends. And it's just – it's funny. It's fun. And it just kind of, again, infuses that joy and, and laughter and humor and entertainment. I mean, I got her a lunchbox for her birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that says Fraser Simone. And so when I take her to Dogtopia of Alexandria, they're like, You got, yes, you're the first, the mom with the lunchbox. But I'm like, That's funny. I think that's funny. <laughs> and is it, and can you, um, it's monogrammed, right? Yes, it's monogrammed. It well, is. I feel like when you're stressed too, like when you were saying the little things, like you, you try to think of other stuff that's stressing you as well. Cause you're like, oh, I'm stressed about scenario A. What else can pile on right now? Oh, yeah, the kitchen's not clean and my house is a mess and I have to go do this, this, and this. And, oh, yeah, that other thing that I have to work on. But if, you tell, if it's a little stuff that you can take care of, kind of keep yourself busy, then when you do have that stressful situation, you're not thinking about those and piling it on yourself too. Yep. That is absolutely – I 100% agree with you. Love that. Well, both great responses. Um, and I think that the laughter and music – first off, music's very good – I think that's something that a couple of our guests have said um, that's, a, that's something that they use as a resource because it's like it's a great escape and, you know, you just kind of – you could like music can be so happy. So I love that. Um, well, that is – this actually concludes our topics for today. Uh, I just want to thank you so much for joining us. As mentioned in the beginning, we have Pamela and Matt. Uh, they are – behind the scenes of We Are Everyone. Matt's typically like the person that you actually you don't see when we're recording, but he's always on every episode. So um, I just want to thank you both again. And we, I'm your host, Jen Sherman of We Are Everyone, and we will catch you next time. 
Thank you for tuning into another episode of We Are Everyone. You can subscribe to We Are Everyone on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and also be sure to visit www.pivotalmoments.org to learn more about the organization. And we also want to hear what mental wellness means to you. So you can follow us on social media, submit your video, and uh, we will catch you next time. Thank you so much.